Hello, Fearless Gamers! Matt here for Fearless Games, and today I'm going to be doing pretty much what I would consider the final video for this um, whole little thing that I'm doing before the Dark Angels release. And this is basically a what is my big concerns for the future of the Dark Angels later on in the series. And that I'd have to say is the um, how GW is going to basically take the direction of the Dark Angels and what decisions they're going to make in regards to them compared to the other chapters. Excuse me. One thing that I'll have to say is, is that a common thing that I hear a lot is, is the issue with Dark Angels is, is there's nothing really unique about them. When they first came out, they were huge. Oh, you know, they can combat squad. Oh, if Belial's there, there's troop choices, our Terminators, and they can have an apothecary. Oh, if Samuel is in it, then their Raven Wings are a troop choice, and they can have an apothecary. And oh, they have plasma cannons in their um, tactical squads. You know, the standard, you know, stuff that. Um, which the plasma cannon thing was a standard thing by third edition for Dark Angels being a um, being able to do that. I'm not sure if the fourth edition Space Marine Codex change that or not. I could be wrong. That was the time when I kind of took a break from Warhammer 40,000. But w the issue was is that with in 5th edition, they kind of basically eliminated everything that made the Dark Angels in essence unique. The only thing else that they really had going for them was Ravenwing and Deathwing. And even then, there were people who were saying like, oh, you know, there's armies that can do it better. Um, one person always felt that the White Scar special character made did weight Ravenwing a whole lot better than Samuel and the Dark Angels official Ravenwing set. And to most, a lot of people feel that Grey Knights do Deathwing a lot better. And actually, I've also, I have heard of people who took the Space Wolf's Codex, which is just, oh, I hate hearing about that. That they took, but they took the Space Wolves Codex to make, de but ran them as Dark Angels instead. And it's a very interesting thing, then that is probably, I'd say, my biggest concern, and, and is basically what really, ri is what the Dark Angels kind of are riding on right now. When you really look at it, the Blood Angels Codex and the the um, Space Wolves Codex, and even to a degree the um, well, actually to a fairly large degree, the um, Black Templar Codexes have things to them that are unique to them. You, it would be really tough to reinvent what they're capable of doing with another codex. Like, again, that's what a lot of people are doing to improve upon what the Dark Angels had. They took a, the, the Space Wolves codex to play them up and just use them as death, as ter as um, as Dark Angels instead. And it's, in a sense, that was one of the biggest issues, is they didn't really have anything enough for them that was unique. You know, at first, you know, okay, again, this is, I'm not sure about what 4th Ed Space Marines were like, but okay, let's just use, just off for argument's sake, that they couldn't do this, they had plasma cannons in their troop choices. You know, their troop dudes could use plasma cannons. Well, they kind of took, got rid of that, okay, regular generic Space Marines can do that. Um... This is again my because my most of my primary knowledge between now and there is like I haven't seen a new Space Marine Codex. I've only done with the Dark Angels Codexes. So the last time I had one was in Third Ed, and I could be wrong about this because unfortunately I don't have my old Space Marine Codex anymore. But from my understanding, Ravenwing was the only group that could put a melt team, um, melt a, a multi melta on their attack bikes. Now, from my understanding, regular generic Space Marines can do it. Um, and also, I believe their land speeder variant was incorporated into the new Space Marine Codex. And they also got a little bit of a um, um, shot in the foot with some of their point costs. Drop pods were cheaper, and um, I think one or two upgrades were a little bit cheaper on the generic Space Marine Codex than it was on the Dark Angels. And in essence, they were basically, they were done okay, thrown out there, listen to the feedback, and then change all the other codexes going forward, but never really FAQ the Dark Angels to make it make sense and incorporate what they altered. In essence, they were just like, okay, thank you guys, and going off this way. And so, will they do that again this time? Now, I'm not doubting that, 
when the when the when the for lack of a better word vanilla space marine codex comes out that it's going to outshine the dark angels that's that's common practice you know you want them okay you want them to buy the dark angels okay you're done with the dark angels you now want them to buy the regular space marines so yes there's going to be that kind of stuff but what i really am hoping and my biggest concern is is that Yes, right now, the Landspeeder Vengeance, the Dark Talon, and all that other good stuff is, you, they say, it's unique to the Dark Angels. Oh, you know, they have all these rare technologies, like the, like the bikers with the plasma cannons, um, plasma guns. They're saying that that's, you know, rare and unique to the Dark Angels. But for how long? Will they change that when it comes into the regular Space Marine Codex and go, oh, we're going to give them those bikers, we're going to give them th that, we're going to give them that variant of the Land Speeder and all this other stuff just so basically everyone can get their Dark Angels um, with the regular Space Marines, but also get these things so they'll, so we'll get the Dark Angel players to buy the vanilla Space Marine Codex as well. And do I, um, in a sense, from previous, from past experience, I would not be shocked if, Dark, if um, Games Workshop pulled this, um, this kind of stunt. But on the flip side, I'm, it, um, there have been a couple of things that they have been doing differently. Like a good example, let me just, again, is, is with the, let's just say for argument's sake, the Blood Angels and the Space Wolves and the Grey Knights. They are distinctively different from the vanilla Space Marines. Could it possibly be that when, you know, hoping that when they saw what happened with the Dark Angels Codex in 5th Ed, they decide, okay, let's not make this same mistake and make them unique. You know, let's make sure, you know, that they, let's make sure that they have at least one or two units that you can't simulate with the vanilla Space Marine Codex, or, okay, let's make sure there's nothing that the, um, that this, there's, let's make sure there's nothing like the Space Marine, let's, let's hope that with the Space Wolves Codex, they stick with the Space Wolves and not go, oh, I'm just going to buy the Blood Angels Codex instead that's already been out and simulate it, the Space Wolves with it. So, forgive me, I tend to talk with my hands a lot, because, and so, that's probably my biggest concern, and so, in essence, I would say that the future of the Dark Angel Army is, is I would say that there's a high probability that they're going to be definitely, without a doubt, overshadowed by the next Space Marine Codex to come out, and possibly even overshadowed by the next Xenos Codex, because you want them to be, you want to, you want, the Games Workshop wants us to buy them. But I, the one thing that I'm not really sure on is, is will the regular Space Marine Codex basically get, take away whatever makes the Space Marines unique, and put it into their own thing, and thus, no, then there would be no reason to play. In essence, are they going to, for lack of a better um, term, because I'm kind of rambling, is, is there's a chance, because history with Games Workshop can sometimes repeat itself, but there's a chance that they'll take away what made it worth playing the space, the Dark Angels, s place it in the Space Marine Codex, and then basically make everyone go, oh, well... Now there's no reason to play the Dark Angels because I can just pick up the regular vanilla codex and get everything that I was going to get in the other Space Marine codex. So let's all. Um, so I'm going to be hoping that that doesn't happen. That they are smart enough to go. Okay, well, we it worked out well with the Space Wolves. It worked out well with the Grey Knights. It worked out well with the Blood Angels. So let's stay on that track. And what? And whatever we say is unique to the Dark Angels, let it stay unique to the Dark Angels. Um, even with, even if they do decide that you know anyone could take a plasma cannon, maybe give them. Hopefully, there'll be some warlord trait that only they have that lets them re-roll their save for um, plasma cannons, or they get a lower save to reduce it or something like that. But. It, in essence, there's really nothing much we can really do about it, but sit and wait. Hopefully, so we so in so in essence, I am concerned about it, but I'm going to enjoy the ride while it lasts. That the Dark Angels are pretty much the only six edition Codex or Space Marines at the time, and whether and when the Vanilla Marines come out, 
what if they end up basically taking away everything that made the Dark Angels unique and we have a repeat of the 5th edition issues that 10 people have? I can definitely say for one that it will not change my opinion on the Dark Angels and even if my codex ends up being crummy and terrible and not worth playing, like the wild card, you'll definitely, you'll like the wild card, I can say this for him, um, I can say this in good confidence that he would agree with me in this, these are two Dark Angel players that you will not see jumping codexes and will be sticking with them until 7th edition or whenever they get a new codex here on out. So, it's almost time for the new release, so we'll stay tuned and we'll have an unboxing video um, coming up fairly soon. So until then, until then, blah, until next time, fearless gamers, take care.